Welcome to Tomorrow's World. I'm happy you can join us today. It's well written, raunchy, and hilariously funny. Four stars out of five. So concluded the movie critic on a local radio station about the movie Friends with Kids. This flick is about two best friends who are not romantically attracted to each other, but they decide to have a child together. Their intent is to keep the relationship on a merely friendly basis so they can avoid the problems kids put on the romantic relationships they see in their friends. Yes, indeed, well written, raunchy, and hilariously funny. But does this mean you should run out and buy a ticket? Are these the proper criteria for choosing which sounds, images, and thoughts you put into your mind? We live in a world where raunchy movies are routine. So are violence, illicit sex, and rebellion against authority. Is it possible that these pictures entering into our minds affect our behavior? Is it possible that all the violence, illicit sex, and rebellion we see in our world today are in part the result of the way we entertain ourselves? The Bible tells us there is a cause for every effect. Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight. Is our modern world under a curse? And if so, what are the causes? The United States, the home of Hollywood, has the highest divorce rate in the world. Korea has the second highest, and Hong Kong takes a third place prize in this shameful contest. While still way behind, China is making significant strides to catch up. Is there a connection between our actions and what we watch on the silver screen? on the television sets in our homes, and the books that we read, and the music that enters into our ears. To answer this question, I'm going to give some biblical instruction along with real life examples. Some of these people I've known personally, such as Jim and Samantha, and Frank and Julie. Others such as Ted Bundy, I haven't met, but their real life stories are a testament to our subject today. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss today's program. I'll be back in a minute. Welcome again to Tomorrow's World. On today's program, I'll be answering the question, is it good for you? I'll be discussing the way we entertain ourselves and whether that has a negative effect on our thinking and behavior. This is a subject that is much debated. Some experts say that it doesn't, while others say that it does. So what is the truth? And can you know? Yes, my friends, you can. And today I'm going to turn to the ultimate expert on human behavior, as well as give you real life examples that back up that source. Have you ever considered who it is that is directing the course of this world? Why is it that mankind can't get along? One would think that if we are truly an evolving species, as so many people think, that we would somehow have learned after all of these years to live in harmony but that's not the case. Instead of becoming more caring for one another, we seem to be less caring. And when it comes to our entertainment, we are no better than the people of ancient Rome who cheered as the Christians were thrown to the lions. Someone may counter that we don't actually cheer for people to be eaten, but the principle is the same. 
Why is it that we love violence so much? Why do we vicariously enjoy watching people stabbed and shot, blown apart and beaten to death? Why is it that we entertain ourselves with things that we don't want happening to ourselves? The Bible tells us that there is a powerful spirit being who is directing the path mankind is walking. And you he made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Many Christians have sung the song, This is my Father's World. It has a likable tune, and I myself sang it and liked it when I was growing up. But what is it really saying, and is it scriptural? As we have just read in Ephesians, the second chapter, there is a powerful spirit being stirring up disobedience in this world, and he is called the prince of the power of the air. He is the one who stirs up the lust of the flesh and the desires of the flesh and the mind. We believe that the God of creation rules over all the universe, but within his rule, who is the God of this world? When people sing, this is my father's world, who is the father they are referring to? In other words, is this God's world? What do the scriptures which God inspired tell us? Jesus Christ made these startling statements as he was nearing the end of his life. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And also, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Furthermore, he declared, the ruler of this world is judged. The context of these statements indicates the ruler of this world, the ruler of this age, is not the God of creation, but is none other than Satan the devil. This is confirmed by the Apostle Paul. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The Jews of Jesus' day no doubt sincerely thought they were worshiping God. But were they? Who was the Father that they were following? Notice what Jesus told these people. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. If we can understand this simple truth, that Satan the devil is directing the course of this world, it's not difficult to understand why the world is as it is. It explains why morality is on a downward spiral. Consider what comes into our homes on television. Desperate Housewives was one of the more popular series in recent years. Now I must confess that I've never watched this series, but I've seen enough advertisements about it to know that adultery is a prime ingredient. And in reading reviews, I've learned that murder is thrown in for good measure. The American blockbuster series coming on in 2012 is GCB. One must wonder what GCB stands for. A little research reveals it is an acronym for Good Christian Bells. But it is equally understood to stand for another B word, which is commonly used for hard to get along with women. The cast's behavior clearly mocks Christianity, where its themes involve betrayal, adultery, failure to forgive, and jealousy. Of course, it is likely quite addictive, as are so many other Hollywood comedy drama series. It may be masterfully written and hilariously funny, 
But is it funny to God, and is it the way that we ought to entertain ourselves? Consider, just because something is funny or entertaining does not make it profitable for you. Candy and ice cream may taste good, but too much can make you sick. Some things in life are good in generous quantities, others are good, but only in moderation. And still others are just plain bad for you. For example, designer drugs may be fun, but they can kill you. So even if something is pleasing in this life, does that mean it is good for you? The Apostle Paul wrote about people who reject God and replace Him with their own standards of right and wrong. Notice this passage from the book of Romans in the first chapter. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, and unmerciful. Now notice carefully the next verse. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. The above is translated from the New King James Version of the Bible. But notice how the older King James Version translates verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but notice this, but have pleasure in them that do them. My friends, are we guilty of this? Do we have pleasure in them that do them? And what are the them that it is referring to? Well, let's read it again, because this is quite a list, and it sounds so much like what we see on television each night. Sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, and unmerciful. If you would like to discover more about how this topic impacts your life, visit us online at www.lcgcanada.org to read our featured literature free of charge. I think we can see that entertaining ourselves with immoral acts is not something pleasing to God. But one may still wonder, is there any tangible harm in doing so? Samantha and Jim were good friends of ours many years ago. They were a beautiful couple with several children. They had a fine home with all the modern conveniences, and Jim held a good paying and respectable job in town. In fact, Jim brought home enough money that Samantha was able to stay home and care for the home and the children. They seemed to be the ideal couple. One day an army buddy of Jim's came through town. He was out of work at the time and ended up staying with them for a few weeks. Now I think you know where this is going. Yes, Jim's friend and Samantha ended up having an affair. This story has played out far too many times with all the tragic fallout that comes with it. In this particular case, I was involved as a junior counselor trying to help this couple put their marriage back together, which they eventually did. But it was never quite the same. There were the wounds that took years to heal and scars that would never go away. In the course of counseling, one fact stood out. Samantha loved romance novels. She was constantly reading books about women being swept off their feet by some proverbial knight in shining armor. She compared her lackluster life to that of the characters in the books she was reading about, and she allowed her mind to drift off to fantasy worlds. 
And when Jim's buddy showed up, she was ripe for the picking. This does not mean that everyone who reads romance novels is going to fall into an illicit affair, but can we dismiss any connection? I personally have no doubt that there was a direct connection between Samantha's reading choices and the disastrous choice she made. Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount that what we think and what we do are connected. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. In this regard, we see that sin not only involves what we do, but also what we think. It is true that not everyone who fantasizes adultery will actually commit the act. There are a number of reasons why he or she may not do so, such as the lack of opportunity, fear of rejection, or fear of getting caught. But what happens when an opportunity does arise and desire overrides fear? The Apostle James explains the process that leads to sinful acts. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He Himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Johnny Paycheck was a singer in the 1970s and was known for a genre of music known as outlaw country. His most popular album featured a song that begins with these words, Take this job and shove it, I ain't working here no more. One might say that it tapped into certain emotions of the time, but one could also say that it fueled the emotions of the time. Case in point. Julie and her husband Frank were good friends of ours, and one day she told us she quit her job. Since it was a good job, we wondered why she would do such a thing. She went into some details about an altercation she had with her boss, and how, as a result, she told her she was quitting. Later she regretted her decision, but when asked why she couldn't just humbly go back and tell her boss that she was sorry, she said that she was too embarrassed to do so. She then confessed what it was that she told her boss, and you guessed it, take this job and shove it, I ain't working here no more. I'm so embarrassed, she explained. At least I could have said something original. I sounded so stupid. Now my friends, where did these words come from? They didn't come out of nowhere. They came straight out of the music that she listened to. Now that wasn't the end of the world, and we've had a few laughs about it since then. But it does illustrate how what we take into our minds, what comes into our ears, has a way of showing up at inopportune times. As quoted above from the book of James, what we say and what we do begins in the mind. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. One of the most notorious serial killers in American history was Ted Bundy. He was interviewed by Dr. James Dobson only hours before he was executed on January the 24th, 1989. And during that interview, he wanted to let the world know how a man who grew up in a loving Christian home with good parents could turn into a rapist and cold-blooded killer of at least 30 women. He explained the following when it came to the genesis of his violent behavior. I think I understand what happened to me. To the extent that I can see how certain feelings and ideas developed in me to the point where I began to act out on them. Certain very violent and destructive feelings. Where did these violent and destructive feelings come from? According to Ted Bundy, they did not come from an abusive home life. Quoting him again, I grew up in a wonderful home with two dedicated and loving parents. So where did this evil come from? His explanation was simple and to the point. 
it began with a progressive involvement in pornography. It took more and more to satisfy his lustful desires, and even when he began to act out those desires, his desires were never satisfied. Further, he explained to Dr. Dobson that 100%, every man without exception that he met during the 10 years he spent in the Florida State Penitentiary who were involved in similar crimes were also heavily involved in pornography. It's a remarkable interview, which you can look up on the internet. Now let us look again at what the Apostle James tells us. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. I rarely go to movies, and when I do, I'm usually disappointed. My sister-in-law is well familiar with my critical approach to the silver screen. One evening we went to see what we thought might be an entertaining and uplifting feature. Cool Runnings was based on the true story of the first Jamaican bobsled team, which competed in the Calgary Winter Olympics. When we walked out of the theater, she asked me, Now what did you find wrong with that movie? I then explained that I did not like the way the one young man had told off his father and how disrespectful he was to his father. But he was a jerk, she replied. Yes, I came back, but Hollywood wrote him into the script to be a jerk. I believe that as her boys grew up, she came to better understand the point. Remember the other movie, Love Story, and how Jennifer calls her father by his first name? Prior to that, I never heard anyone call his father by his first name. But after Love Story, you began to hear it. The golden rule found in the scripture says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. People often quote the verse this way, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And Confucius said something similar, but he put it in the reverse. What you do not want done to you, do not do to others. However, in Elvis Presley's 1957 movie, Jailhouse Rock, a cynical twist was put on this admonition on how to treat others. Do unto others as you would have them do to you, but do it first. And the saying stuck. Today young people quote it as though it were some new revelation, not realizing where it came from and how long it has been around. Many years ago, another minister and I were involved in counseling a young adult man who allegedly became involved in an inappropriate relationship with a girl in her early teens. This was a criminal offense in the state where it took place. We reported the incident to the appropriate authorities who asked us to investigate and report back to them. At one point, I asked the young man what he was thinking of as this incident progressed, and his matter-of-fact reply stunned the two of us. I was trying to remember how they did it in the movies. Here was a smoking gun when it comes to the question of whether what we take into our minds affects behavior. He also later told me, I know that you may use my case as an example for others, and that's okay with me. But please tell people not to think something like this can't happen to them. I never thought it would happen to me, but it did. This is not God's world. Yes, he does have rule over the whole universe, but he has allowed Satan to continue on this earth to test us and to try us. And it is Satan who directs the course of this evil age. As it says in the book of Galatians, Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. This present evil age is coming to an end. Satan's time is limited, and we have a choice to make. We can gullibly allow him to lead us about like a bull with a ring in his nose, or we can look to the future when a new course will be charted in the world. The Apostle John warns us, 
Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lusts of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Yes, it may be well written, raunchy, and hilariously funny. Yes, it may be four stars out of five, but is it good for you and me? Advertisers know very well that images that come into our minds through sight and sound do affect our behavior. They bet on it every day with millions and billions of dollars. Why is it that we cannot see what they know? If you'd like to learn more about today's subject, please go to our website that will be shown on the screen momentarily. There you can order or read online the literature offered today. And do be sure to come back next week when Richard Ames, guest presenter Rodney King, and I will give you more good news from the pages of the Bible about tomorrow's world when Jesus Christ will return and set up a harmonious new world. See you next week at the same time and same station. If you would like to discover more about how this topic impacts your life, visit us online at www.lcgcanada.org to read our featured literature free of charge. The preceding program has been produced by the Living Church of God.